Okay, this one is a bit of a mixed bag. I'm just going to rattle off a couple of things that have caught my eye lately. So uh, first, I wanted to put things also in perspective, which is going to be the whole um, overarching, let's say, topic for, for this video. Um, and talk a little bit about the Corona Chan, you know, the, the coronavirus, which, as I mentioned in the last video, and as I went through in a bit more detail on the blog, is looks like it's a pretty much genetically engineered thing and here's the interesting thing because obviously Bill Gates is deeply involved with this given that he's one of the the people that's involved with the Purbright Foundation which patented the coronavirus in 2015 um, and you can verify these things for yourself you don't have to believe me use your uh, DuckDuckGo search engine or whatever and uh, figure it out but the uh, the incredible thing is that you know what i'm wondering is are they elites like it just goes to show they're not all on the same page because you know coronavirus kills orientals more zuckerberg is married to a chinese woman now maybe he's just looking for a cheap way out of a divorce who knows and he's in cahoots with bill gates or is he against it tough to tell but um keeping things in perspective think about the Black Plague, which wiped out pretty much a third of humanity in, in the known world at the time, you know, in the in Europe and so on. A third of the human race was pretty much wiped out. Um, now, by all accounts, this coronavirus seems to have a mortality of about 2-3%. Uh, but, you know, it's early days. Let's say it's 5%. And it also seems to be genetically engineered to affect Orientals a lot more. So, you know, there is that. The, the data coming out of China is obviously fake. It's obviously false because it follows a linear trend that's 99.9% .9 predictable, which obviously is not based on anything real. So, you know, it, it sort of makes you wonder what the real numbers are in, um, in China. But from all accounts, uh, at least from the more credible sources that we can get, there's about two, two, two to three percent mortality rate. But let's say it's five percent. You know, five percent means that if you catch the disease, you basically got to roll a one on your D20. You know, if you roll a critical fail, then you die. Otherwise, your saving throw is just pretty good. You know, so unless you're an old man, a baby, you know, somebody that's already got some other weaknesses diseases you're probably all right so it's not really a cause for massive panic now that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be repercussions because the modern world is so interconnected that you know if they close down a port because some of the guys on the docks get sick and i mean like they, they shut down an office in canary wharf with hundreds of of employees because one person had visited uh, I can't remember if they came back from Italy or China or whatever, one of the countries where there is a bit of a thing going on, and they had flu-like symptoms. So quickly panic, shut down the office for two weeks. <laughs> you know, it's like, and that's Canary Wharf. That's one of the central uh, financial districts in, in London. Uh, they've shut down a school that I know of. Uh, so people are, in a to a certain extent, panicking. But again... Look, obviously, you know, if a loved one, you know, somebody you care about is one of the people that gets infected and dies, it's tragedy for you. But in the big scheme of things, you know, this coronavirus doesn't look like it's going to be the zombie apocalypse that people think it is. So keep that in perspective. And also, this leads me around to another topic, which is black pillars. You know, black pillars are those people that are like, the sky is falling and there's transgenders everywhere and they're going to force you to be gay next and we're all doomed, and there's no way out. Those people are scum, okay? If you're a depressive and depressed black pillar, just do the world a favor, just go into one of the mass graves that should be built for you somewhere. These are useless human beings. They're, they're less than useless, they're a drag. They're an actual drag on the human race. And I quite, I, I pretty much despise them more than the active enemy. I despise them more than Antifa because they're just demoralizing, depressed, depressing, weak, weak-willed losers. I mean, 
and again you know this for me all ties together to like catholicism and, and everything because if you think about it think about the great battles that were won i mean like the island of rhodes or the the, the siege of malta or the battle of lepanto i mean <laughs> in rhodes the crusaders there you know people that try and say that oh the, the islamic world was you know all great and it educated the West. It's all bullshit, of course. They, the Islamists have always been barbarians, and they always will be. They're backward people, and the only um, contributions they did was because when they took over other countries, other areas that had Christians in them, um, those Christians were the ones that knew how to do the maths, how to do the astronomy, and it was those Christians that translated it into Arabic, not even the Arabs themselves. The, the Christians translated it into Arabic, and then some of the Arabs, some of the elite classes read it and knew a little bit about it and whatever. But, you know, the, the numbers that they're all saying, oh, they're Arabic numbers. They're not Arabic. They're Hindu. The math comes from the Hindus. The astronomy, mostly from the Syrians, but also the Copts, um, they... Uh, Anything to do with architecture was Christians. Even the minarets in that was Syrians and was Byzantines. Literally, the Muslims are, you know, just uh, like orcs, basically. They're just a warring orc-type people that they just take over and assimilate what they can. And they can't even maintain the technology, even when they do get the slaves and the dimmies and the the captured Christians to do the stuff for them, they still can't even maintain it or use it properly. Which is why, um, even after um, you know the the Crusades left the the Outremer because they couldn't afford to just keep funding it because obviously you know the Orthodox weren't helping. Um, they just kept making deals and deals and deals with the Muslims, and eventually Constantinople fell. Um, and of course, they weren't helping the the Crusaders, the Catholics in uh, you know the Outremer either. Um, but even so, you know, the Crusaders went and took over the, the island of Rhodes. Now, the island of Rhodes is only 11 miles off the coast of Turkey, and they kept it for, like, a few centuries, <laughs> you know? And even when when they eventually lost it, I mean, keep in mind, there were only about 600 knights with maybe a couple of thousand mercenaries. And these 600 knights got attacked by Suleiman, which was the big, biggest, greatest, you know, Muslim warlord ever, 40,000 Muslims attacked this enclave on Rhode Island, which is a tiny island off the coast of Turkey, with 40,000 troops, Muslim enemy, and 600 knights and a couple of thousand mercenaries. And they, uh, the, the knights kicked the shit out of the Muslims so badly that eventually Suleiman allowed them, said, look, you know, we're, you will eventually all die out, if, but I'm letting, willing to let you guys go. And they, they made a deal where all the knights could march off with all the possessions and leave the island. Any citizen that wanted to leave was free to leave. There would be no taxes or imposition on any of the citizens that remained for something like three or five years, I can't remember. No one would be taken into slavery and so on. And Suleiman ag agreed these terms, and you'll understand why in a second. And um, in, you know, to his credit, he actually kept his word, which most of the Muslim uh, leaders that ever sieged the castle, whenever they made a deal, they never kept the terms. They usually just slaughtered everybody, even though they promised not to and whatever. But in this case, they, they kept their word. And um, the thing is, you know, when you talk about black pillars, remember, the Knights of Rhodes fought and killed something like over, over a hundred to one. They, they lost something like, you know, 320 knights to, to something like 40,000 Muslims that they killed because they kept coming or whatever. So it was like odds of over a hundred to one and they, they killed like thousands of them. It was over like a hundred bodies for each knight that they created. And did these guys despair? No, and they knew it was coming. They knew it was coming. It was like they weren't, you know, they weren't just sitting on the island of Rhodes waiting for the. No, they were on the island of Rhodes and they continually raided the Muslim ships that were going by. And I want you to remember something. These were hardcore Catholics. It's Catholics that were on the island of Rhodes. It's Catholics that defended Malta. It's Catholics that had the Battle of Lepanto. 
not Protestants anything, because they didn't even really exist. Uh, you know, they barely started. And not the Orthodox. It's only the Catholics that did these, these things. So keep that in mind. And it's important. It's important to remember this stuff. Because, you know, people look at Bergoglio and think, yeah, well, the Catholics, you know, they just rape children. And yeah, that's not Catholics. That's the Norkins, you know, Novus Orco, short for Novus Orco, Norkins. The Norkins do that. Bergoglio, you know, and those scum do that. But the Catholics took over the island of Rhodes, kept it for a couple of centuries, and continually harassed the Muslim <laughs> shipping to the point that Suleiman eventually got pissed off and said, right, I'm going to wipe these guys out. And he couldn't. And then what did they do? They moved to the Isle of Malta. And 43 years later, Suleiman, same guy, tried to take over the island of Malta. That didn't work either. It was a different leader then. You know, the, 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 the chief of the of the knights in Rhodes was Adam something or other, I can't remember his name. And he then went to the Isle of Malta. But by the time that Suleiman came on, it was Jean Perizot Levalet that uh, was the chief of the knights. And it was an astonishing defense. Once again, you know, the Muslims lost thousands of men to like something like 500 knights and a few peasants that were trained in weapons and, you know, a couple of volunteers and mercenaries. And no one came to their help. Because as the Pope said at the time, who was trying to get, you know, the kings of Europe to come and help Malta, uh, he said, well, you know, King Philip is, is like, the the um, king of Spain, which was King Philip, I believe, at the time, he's embroiled in all these wars, and Spain was never really an empire. It was a backward society that that was he was trying to hold on to this vast empire, had wars on every front, and and the Pope said, and the French and the English are, you know, and the rest of Europe are um, have got women or children <laughs> as their leaders <laughs> because they had queens and like young kings and stuff like that, so. Eventually, the Spanish sent somebody, um, but yeah, and again, these were guys that knew what was coming, and they stood there, and they fought at odds of 100 to 1. I mean, Levalette was over 70 years old, and he was fighting on the walls at every point, every time whenever there was a fight, he would be in there at the front, you know, even when he was wounded in his 70s, wounded in the leg with very little armor, and he just fought all day, and his men were imploring him, please, sir, get down. He was like, nah, I'm good, you know. What a way to go, <laughs> if today is my day. And he didn't even die in the battle anyway. So <laughs> that's what it means to be Catholic. That's what it means to be a proper Christian. None of this church and bullshit. And again, you know, the Knights of Malta also raided the, the, the Muslim uh, shipping. Rightly so, rightly so. Um, because, of course, the Muslims raided the European lands for, for centuries. You know, they, they got literally millions of uh, slaves, of women and children as slaves, and they usually kill the men. Then they'd raise the children to become their elite fighting unit. Even as, uh, you know, as Muslim captors and Muslim slaves that became Muslim fighters, the best troops of Islam where the Christians that had been kidnapped as, as kids or become or been made into like fighters for the Sultan, uh, the Janissaries. So when some guy goes, oh, you know, the transgenders are going to take over. It's like, what kind of worm are you? Are you not ashamed? You're not ashamed to call yourself a man if, if that's your attitude. It's just pathetic, really pathetic. So keep that in mind when you start to despair a little bit, you know, like 500 years ago, there was some knight like swinging his sword on the walls all day and rebuilding the walls at night, wounded, dying with no water, maybe thirsty for days. you know. And yet they did it. So what the fuck are you bitching about? Hey, coronavirus is going to kill us all. No, stop bitching. Yeah. That's pretty much my message. You know, it's like I am kind of disappointed by even, you know, the, the got quite a lot of people following this channel and some of them have joined the, the, the Kurgan Immortals on Facebook. And I understand if you don't want to be on Facebook, it's fine. But, you know, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to use the, the, the tools of the enemy to, to fight him. Why not? I don't care. It's fine. I'll use whatever. Oh, but the NSA is listening in on you through your television. So let them listen in. You know what my father had to say about that? I live alone, I've got a lot of dogs, and I fart a lot. And so do the dogs. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so some guy in the fucking NSA is hearing my farts. Who gives a shit? You know, that's that's a good attitude to have. And he's in his seventies, you know. So all you guys that are a little bit depressed and depressing, you know, just just no. That's not the way to do it. Immortal Bear, he's a guy. He's he's a proper Catholic. He just decided I'm gonna do this, and he did, and he, and he is. He's he's doing awesome stuff. Which brings me to another point. Catholic village and Catholic city-states. When I was working a little bit in Kazakhstan and all over the place, one of the projects that came my way was um, on not a huge tract of land. You know, we're talking, I think it was maybe less than a hectare even, or maybe it was about a hectare, you know, like a couple of acres, not, not a huge space. And it was a modular building of putting to using cargo containers to build a little community of small apartments shops and there was even an abattoir and a, and a, in this case it was a, a mosque but what i thought about is like well why couldn't you do that for catholics so catholic couples that maybe don't have a huge amount of money or young families if you create you know near a town or sort of a, but it's outside so that you can create you buy a piece of land and you put together these, you can use cargo containers or modular homes or something, you know, standardize it, make it easy and cheap so it's affordable. Make sure that every family has a little plot of land to go with the with the property that they buy so that they can do a little bit of farming or whatever. They might even decide to join up their little bits of land so that they can have a communal sort of farm thing or whatever. Put a little chapel in the center of the of the tiny village or you know whatever you want to call it i don't know what to call it a mini village or something and at least invite or have the ability to have a proper priest a catholic priest not a novus orca priest you know an actual catholic priest if they can't live there at least visit there and if they can live there the community can help the priest survive and the priest can work too now there's a very important point about this this is not just you know dreaming and pie in the sky I think it was Vox that mentioned that, like, he thinks up of possibilities. And then a guy like me comes along and says, right, this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> and he goes, no, the Kurgan is just immediately like, how are we going to do it? And, and it's true because I'm a tactician rather than a strategist. But the point is that monasteries were the creation of capitalism. It was monasteries that created capitalism because it was a community of disciplined men that worked and produced food, and beers and all sorts of stuff and they produced it so well that they got an overabundance of it and then they started to sell it and they started to trade with it and they became wealthy there's absolutely no reason why a little catholic community that starts out with a couple of cargo containers and a little chapel and it doesn't matter if the chapel is a tent you know it's fine but it has to be clearly delineated as hardcore catholic for a simple reason that you then won't have the undesirables because you don't want people that, you know, smoke, drink, do drugs, all that shit. So you buy a piece of land, you make it private property, you get an application so people can buy the land, can buy their property, they can buy their little plot, they can buy their little apartment or little house or whatever it is that you build. But you make sure that now the community has to agree that, yeah, you're a Catholic, yeah, you're a proper Catholic, you're not an Orkin, you understand what we're about, you know, you, you don't get crazy drunk in the weekends and whatever, shout, beat your kids and do drugs. You don't smoke marijuana. In fact, you don't smoke, period, as far as I'm concerned. You know, if it's a Catholic community, it should be completely non-smoking. Just fuck off. There's no reason that anybody should have to smell your, your dirty, filthy, disgusting drug habit because you can't control yourself. Nah. I, I despise smokers and smoking. It's an idiotic thing. It's got no serves no purpose whatsoever. So I would I would ban smoking outright in those communities. Also because if they're Catholics and they're proper Catholics, there will be children and loads of children and loads of young children, which means that they can grow up together, play together in an environment that is truly communal and of, of a community that is not. You know, and keep in mind that Catholics are both insular but communal. In other words, what you do inside your own home, that's your business. But outside of your home, you know, you if your neighbor's kid is doing some shitty thing and you know about it, you're like, hey, your kid's doing that shitty thing. Without being a nosy, you know, 
curtain trembler type of person. But um, that would be amazing. So um, there are some people already talking about it. They've mentioned Alabama, they've mentioned Florida, purely because if you are going to do something like this, um, the most important thing you need to understand is zoning laws, building laws, building permits, water, access to water, access to sewage, access to electricity. None of these things are insurmountable odds because, you know, even for sewage, even if you don't have a sewage line that runs nearby that you can connect to or whatever, you can have septic tanks. So that can work. Um, you could have a big central septic tank for the whole community, depending on how big it is. And you can modularize it. So, you know, it's one little community has a huge septic tank and X number of little homes. And then you can add on to it, you know. Um, but of course, building codes, is there, you know, what are the building codes? Are they, do they fall within the limits? Are the permits and that sort of thing really onerous or are they relatively easy to get? Uh, what's access to clean and fresh water like? Um, can you have a well? Do you have a stream nearby? Are you allowed to, you know, process it? Uh, make, have your own little water plant or whatever, you know? These are all the important things, the practical things. Once you figure that out, then it's just a matter of land. How much land can you get? How much land can you buy? And then doing it, building the project. Doesn't have to be super expensive, you know. With like a couple of million dollars, you can do a lot. You can do quite a lot. Um, we were looking at this in, in Kazakhstan and it was very, very affordable. The, um, the investor that wanted to do it, eventually he didn't go for it. Or he had some other deal come up and uh, then he was he didn't have enough money to do both. And I think he, he went with the other deal. I don't know what the other deal was because I wasn't involved in it. But um, So that's an idea. And if, if you want to do that, you know, run with it. Um, there are plenty of countries where you could do that. So speak to your friends, speak to your family, get a little enclave going somewhere, you know, get in touch. That's why I created the little groups, the Kurgan Immortals, and that's why I'm on Social Galactic. It's, you know, I'm not a really a huge fan of all these digital ways of getting across, including this, but it is a way to get make people aware and so on. So we also have um, a little project. I still don't want to tell you the details of, but it's, it's good. It's getting close to the end, and I hope in the next couple of weeks we will be able to... Um, to issue something that's very unusual, you know, it's not for everybody, but uh, but it's it's going to be something interesting and very very Catholic. So um, that's about it, I think. So if you want to run with that idea of the little Catholic community, please do and let me know about it. You know, if you're going to do that, let me know about it. I mean, I might be able to help. I might be able to give you some pointers. I've been in construction for you know many years now, um, over thirty years now, so I know something about that sort of thing. And um, yeah, and whatever, you know, if there's an oligarch out there that has been hit by lightning and decides, hey, I want to do this, I'm your man, you know, just drop me an email or whatever. Okay, that's about it. Have a good evening.